Awol, shalom, shalom, my brothers and sisters, Rastafari. We're going to touch on this. 2012. 2012. Is 2012 a leap year or not a leap year? All right? Okay. Is 2012 a leap year or is 2012 not a leap year? We talked about this. We discussed this a little bit briefly in... Um, this Torah portion on a Mitzora. You understand? So if you've watched the previous um, uh, Torah portion, we, t we touched a little briefly on the fact that there seems to be some anomaly, right? There, there appears to be some anomaly concerning this um, 2012, right? An anomaly is this, right? Is this the systemic anomaly? Is this the systemic anomaly, or is this an example of the systemic anomaly? In other words, how come the Jewish, the Jewish um, loony, lunar, loony solar, that means lunar, according to lunar um, calculation, and according to the solar calculation, how come it is said that this 2012 is a common year. In other words, if you consult um, with uh, the Vayikra, the Vayikra is a particular book based on um, the modern um, Judaic or Jewish uh, interpretation, you understand, of Judaism. In fact, right here under this particular Torah portion, for the 28th, let's just go back to this page, um, page uh, 177. In the second paragraph, it says, the Luni solar Hebrew calendar contains up to 55 weeks. The exact number varying between 50 in common years and 54, 55 in leap years. In leap years, for example, 2011, 2014, in 2016, for example, Parsha Mesora, which is this week's Torah portion, reading and feeding, is read separately. And in common years, that means years that are not leap years. You understand? Know for example, it says uh, 2012, which is this year, 2013, which is next year. 2014, 2017, and 2018. Now, something very interesting is going on. Because now, Parsha Mitzvah is combined with the previous Parsha. In other words, this Kufal, this, this Torah portion reading, um, Mitzvah, the Mitzvah to Ken, is combined with last week's portion that is known as um, um, Tazaria or Bitaregis. So the 27th, 28th are joined together in what is known as um, in what is known as um, common years. Now, notice something very key about this. So we're going to first of all ask this question. Let us ask this question: um, Is let's go. Is 2012 a leap year? Right? Is it a leap year or not? Is 2012 a leap year or not? Now, some folks say that, well, here's how you can tell a leap year. They say a leap year, right? And, and this is from like a Western Gentile perspective, right? A leap year is somehow divisible, you understand? Is divisible by the number four. You see what I'm saying? A leap year is divisible by the number four. For example, um, 2012, just according to the numerology or the number of it, should be considered a leap year. Now, here's the big kind of controversy around this. And this kind of came up actually this, this particular evening when we were with some of our, um, or actually we could say the Shabbat Eve, when we spent with some of our um, Zemed, you know, the Zemed, the, our relations. And we were looking at this right here, Kidanachin. Now, Kidanachin is from the Ethiopia Kingdom of God site. Our um, brethren, um, Nabura Id, right? Nabura Id. 
Um, this is for the Liuitim Meskerem um, 2004, which began September 12, 2011. Now, let's keep this in mind. This is where this is where the Holy Spirit just showed us something. Now, Ethiopically speaking, this calendar year is 2004, right? From a from the Gregorian perspective, it is 2011 to 2012 calendar. Now, usually when we have an Ethiopian leap year, and let's open this up right here, and let's show something right here. Now, this right here is what's, what was known as a Pagume, right? Pagume. Pagume are those intercalendary years, I mean, the calendary days, those five days. So we have three right here, and who let source. Right? Then up here, it has two days, Arat, you see right here, Arat, uh, Mist. But in leap years, there is usually, in leap years, there is usually six days. You know what I'm saying? That, that extra day, so forth and so on. So let us ask the question, what is up with that? What is up with that? This is the interesting thing. Now, this is from the Ethiopian perspective, right? This is from the so-called Jewish perspective. Both of them say that 2012 is a common year and not a leap year. But from a Western Gentile perspective, 2012, because the extra day in February and all that that they talk about according to the so-called Gregorian, Julian, blah, 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 you understand, is considered a leap year. Now, is it, first of all, a leap year or is it not? From a Western Gentile perspective, 2012 is considered a leap year. Why? Because they say 2012 is divisible by four. But let's go back to the root of this whole calendar thing. This is what kind of shows that the Ethiopian and the Hebraic, you understand, or the Ethiopian and the Jewish meet and see eye to eye that 2012 is not a leap year. The Western Gentiles say 2012 is a leap year. So let's ask ourselves, first of all, why would the, the Jewish calendar and the, and, and, and the, and the Jewish orthodoxy and, and those who, and they study this, we know they study it very, very deeply. That's why they're in the position they're in and everyone else is basically like a Gentile. Even the lost sheep live like Gentiles. But now the Ethiopian calendar, Kidanachin, according to Kidanachin, says that 2012 is not a leap year. And then I heard that um, my, my, my wife and her sister, they went and checked it out and found that there was another, there was another Ethiopian <laughs> calendar, too, that actually said that 2012 is not a leap year. Now, folks are really kind of like wondering, like, well, what's up with this? Then it came to I. And actually came to I while, while discussing, and if you look at the last video, the video for um, Mensora, it's kind of a long vid. I go into leprosy and the spiritual implications of it, so forth and so on. This week's Torah portion, the illumination came to I and I. Leikun Barhanu, Barhan Yehun, let there be light. Here's, here's the reason why. First of all, let's put this here. We have Luni, which is concerning the moon, right? The moon. And then we have Sola, right? Which is concerning the, the, the sun. So we have moon, right? The Hebrew calendar. The, the Hebrew calendar is lunar. You understand? That's how we tell when the new moon is. You understand? That's how we tell when the new month is. This is how we also calculate when the holy days, based on the heavenly rotation, based on the heavenly clock. And by extension, you understand, we recognize the, the witness of the stars, right? Not according to Greenwich time, not according to some 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 little town in England or something like that, but according to Jah's true witness. Remember what the, what the scriptures say? 
his heavenly witness, his faithful, as a faithful witness in the sky, that the moon, the Bible says the moon is John's faithful witness in the sky. But they say that if we're looking at the moon, we loony, right? So instead, they make up their own calendars. The Pope, he takes us fools around for count like October actually means eight. You understand? But which month it is? August, I think it means something like, so not, they, they mixed up everything, basically, in the Western calendar. We're not going to go through all the details about that, so on and so on. But here we have solar, right? Solar is the sun, right? And, and Christ is likened to the sun, right? Messiah, Christ, likened to the sun. Here the Luna is like the mother, right? Reflected light. Reflected light of what? The sun, right? And the sun... Christ, Father, right? So what we have is the Father and the Mother faithful calculation of the heavens. But now here's the key about the leap year. The Hebrews, the Hebrew and the Jewish are correct. This year is not a leap year. The Ethiopian calendar also is correct. It is not a leap year. <laughs> When does the Jewish calendar begin? The civil calendar, right? It begins roughly September time, right? It begins at the civil calendar, the seventh month of September. When does the Ethiopian calendar begin? Also civil, it begins September, September 11th. So we have September, right? We have September or Sept for the beginning, right? of the year. Now, that means that 2012, Hebraically speaking, ends sometime around September. That means from the, from the lunar ends sometime around September. From the, the, the Ethiopian or the solar Christ, God the Father, the Son, which really, you have to know, the moon, when you see the light of the moon, you don't see the sun. But the light of the moon actually is coming from the sun. You understand? So we have, we have the law. We have the instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. So both of these calendars, both the, under the lunar, we have the so-called Jewish, right? We have the Jewish, right? Under the father, right, we have, we have what we can call the... Ethiopian, the Ethiopian calendar, or the Christian, already Christ being focused on right here, and Christ, a Hebrew, Christ, a Jew, so forth and so on. So you understand how this Ethiopian Hebrew, so you see the link, you see the correspondence, sun and the moon, they both operate together. You understand, actually, the moon reflects the light of the sun, and both of them end around September. Now, here is the anomaly about this that we notice to be so interesting. When we look into here, we see that in leap years, notice when the leap years are. For example, 2011 is not really divisible by that four thing that they teach us, the Gentiles tell us, right? 2014, maybe 14 to even. You know, that's how they play with it. 2016. But now, 2012 is the systemic anomaly. This is where we're going to see time. We're going to see some very strange effects with time over the next seven or so years. You understand? Some say this is the very time of the Great Tribulation. Some say this is when the whole kind of celestial kind of thing is going to go off track. But here's a key indication, this leap year thing. So why does the Jewish calendar and the Ethiopian calendar agree? Because they are both pointing to God's clock. God's clock basically says that, yeah, this whole number four thing, divisible by four, that worked. You know, that, that works, and that will work again, but notice something right here. It says that the common years, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, notice when the common years go back to that 
that even that even Stephen thing in 2018, but we're not out of the woods yet. We are out of the woods, so to speak, in 2020. This is why this particular period of time, 2012, is the systemic anomaly. So why is all this all happening? You understand? Because it is another sign. Now, most folks, this probably goes over their head. They're probably like, so what? Leap year, no leap year, it don't really matter. But for the faithful, it definitely does matter. Because that means that we, we have a choice here. We can keep following the Gentile false time. You understand? Or we can recognize the Almighty's heavenly sign. You see, they try to keep it to some, if it's divisible by four, then that's how you're going to get such and such and such. That's garbage. That's garbage because the whole Western calendar is basically garbage too. It's a patchwork of nonsense for the heathen to worship false gods. That's why they did terrible violence to what you know as your calendar. This is also part of the reason why the Jews on some level were persecuted too because they were keeping a higher authority. Remember that commercial for Hebrew, Hebrew national. We answer to a higher authority. In a sense, they do. You understand? And in a sense, we do too. So the loony, both the sun and the moon, or the moon and the sun is bearing witness. Remember, these are God's faithful witnesses. This is why this whole 2012, a leap year, is it a leap year? Here's, what, here's the answer. It would have been a leap year in so-called normal times. But if you calculate, you understand why it's not a leap year? It's because 2012, so-called, really ends for the Hebrews and the faithful Ethiopians. You understand? It ends in September. See what I'm saying? It ends, and it's not like your Western Gentile nonsense that goes to this. See, by the time you get to December, guess what? We are already in the Ethiopian, the Hebrew equivalent of 2013 by that time. You see what I'm saying? We're already in almost a new year. So in other words, December would be what, what, September, October, November, December. September will be like the third or the fourth month, you understand, of the Hebrew and the Jewish, you understand, and the Ethiopian New Year. But now in the West, you're all still thinking that it's 2012. Why? Because the Pope told you so. And you want to believe the Pope? you got to watch it right there. So this is one of the reasons. I don't know if some of you all really understand what I'm saying right here. That September is the, let me write this here, September is the civil right, is the civil new year, right, for both, we have Rosh Hashanah, we have Adis Ahmet, you know what I'm saying, both of them for September, around the September month time, September marks a new year, so it's no longer 2012 in that, quote, Gentile sense, coming from a Hebraic and an Ethiopian Christian perspective, but it's already 2013. And that is one of the reasons why the Ethiopians could not add another day into those five intercalinary days, you understand, because it, it doesn't exist. You see what I'm saying? But your Western Gentile tells you that it's a leap year. No. It's a systemic anomalous year. That's what this is all about. So this is just a brief, we're going to get into a little bit more detail on that, but I just wanted to break down some of the basic mechanics to this, that both the Hebrews, you understand, if you have Vayikra, and you could check out some other, you know, Hebrew sources and Jewish sources out there, they'd say that, and, you know, I've read over this before, I said, wait, those numbers are kind of odd. It's almost like if you look at the leap year now, the leap year, 2011 was a leap year. That's strange. Really? Yeah. 2011 was the leap year, not 2012. Because our calendar was civil from September to 
September. You know what I mean? Basically, September to September, not from January to December, you know? And when we start to look at these years afterward, common years, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018, now, ones would say, well, how could this be so? It's not divisible by four. The question is this. Who told you that's, that's how you count time? The Gentiles did. The Romans did. The Pope did. That might be one reason why Etna is, is erupting, you know, as well. I know it might sound a little cruel and everything, but it's, it's not cruel. It's just the reality. Etna is erupting. You know what I'm saying? This is like the seventh eruption so far, 13 earthquakes as far as April and a whole bunch of other signs and wonders that should be waking people up, but most people are not awake. My brothers and sisters, if you're awake to this, go check it out for yourself. 2012 is not a leap year. 2011 was your leap year. Because if we look at the calendar, right, if we look at the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar, it says that last year was a leap year. When does the Hebrew, the Jewish calendar begin? September, the civil, so the civil calendar begins September. The Ethiopian calendar also said that 2011 was the leap year. You understand? Know Why is that? Why is it not 2012? Because when does the Ethiopian calendar begin? It begins September. So if you look back, you will see that extra day was already added previously. You see what I'm saying? So if you, if you, I have to probably break down like a different, like a calendar, show you a calendar of the Hebrew or the Western calendar. You know, really, some of y'all, if you don't have any knowledge of how do we get this calendar that we have today, how do we calculate time? The, the, the point about time is very, very, very important. Now, I don't know if I made my point. Huh? I don't know if I really made my point just yet about, about what's wrong with time. Babylon is on the wrong time. You understand? You better either, either jump off the train. If the train comes into a station, get off the train. If, if the train ain't stopping, you better try to get off. The train is going to crash because the time that Babylon is working on has no correspondence to God's time in the heavens. Some of them might know it. Maybe they're preparing themselves, but they definitely are not telling the sheeple anything. You understand? So brothers and sisters, you understand? Check this out. Pass it on. Do some of the research for yourself. 2012 is not a leap year. And this is proven by the Hebrew, the Jewish. The Jews know this. The faithful Jews know this. And the faithful Ethiopian know this. How ironic. It reminds me of this verse right here from Amos, right? Uh, what is that? Nine and seven. Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Shalom, Aras Tefari.